Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, we have chosen to rejoice and be glad therein. We're so grateful and we're so appreciative for another opportunity to be able to come uh, together in this um, uh, in the airwaves <laughs> on this conference call uh, where we're able to pray together, we're able to bombard heaven together, we're able to call upon the name of the Lord together. And I'm so thankful for all of you, your commitment, your faithfulness. So many of you tell me um, that you look forward to this moment. You look forward to this um, during the week. Um, you know, so many say that this is their, their boost for the week. This is their, to help them get over the hump, over the hump day, uh, kind of help them uh, fuel, fuel for the re remainder of the week. And I'm grateful to God uh, for your attitude um, concerning prayer, because prayer should be all of that for us. It should be something that we anticipate should be something that we long for, something that we look for, something that we, the people of God, are accustomed to doing. Uh, we should not be treating prayer like um, like an emergency, uh, break in case of emergency, break glass in case of emergency, but no prayer uh, should be something that's a part of us. Uh, just like air is to a humanoid, so should prayer be to a believer. We ought to be praying just as much as we, we're breathing. Jesus said that we ought to we ought to pray without ceasing. Jesus said we ought to pray without fainting. Pray that we don't faint. Paul said we ought to pray without ceasing, and that ought to just be a part of our makeup. So I thank God for all of you. I appreciate you, and I thank God for all that you do. Um, I, I love that song that I kind of queued up there. Um, Here is my worship, all of my worship. And there's a line in that song that says, "As long as I am breathing." I will always worship you. That's a that's a heavy statement. Uh, that's a bold declaration. But man, when you get it down in the in the in in the very fiber of your being, down in your bones, um, that you are a worshiper of God and you love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you don't mind making declarations like that. As a baby believer, I used to be afraid to say things like that because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to be a backslider. I didn't want to be. Uh, someone that was in and out and up and down and then say, make all these bold declarations. And then you look up years down the road and I'm gone. So I would I wouldn't say things like that. Uh, but now I've been walking with them for a little while now. And now I know I can confidently say I'm not going anywhere <laughs> by the grace of God. I'm not going anywhere. I may do a lot of things. I may mess up royally. I may mess up really, really bad <laughs> by the grace of God. I won't even do that. But uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving him. I, 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 he's just been too good. He's been too good to me. I know too much about him now. Uh, can't make me doubt him. And, and and that is a bold thing. That just really that that verse that verse in that song gets me every time because it is it ought to speak to how we ought to be as believers. How committed we ought to be. How dedicated we ought to be um, to one that has saved our soul. So Father, we thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for all that you've done, and we thank you for all that you're going to do. You are our source and our strength. You are the very strength of our lives. And we come to you this day, God, humbly, but yet boldly before your throne of grace, that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor, and we give your name the praise. Um, Father, we thank you for being our source and our strength. We thank you for being the very strength of our lives. We thank you, God, that where we can be able to express worship and be able to offer you worship. Uh, you told that woman at the well that the time coming and now is that those that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, she pivoted and started talking about a place of worship. And then you you, you had to school her and let her know that and, uh, it's going to come a time, my ma'am, ma'am, uh, that uh, that your, neither will your fathers worship in this mountain or another. We will not be worshiping Jerusalem. Um, but worship is not about a place, but worship is about a posture. And God, I'm thankful that we're 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 living out that reality even right now we are in different parts of the city of jacksonville we're in different parts of the country even and god we are all around the place god but yet and still um, we are all um have singleness of heart and singleness of mind uh, some of us are at work right now some of us are, are sitting at our desk 
Some of us are driving into work. Some of us are driving with truckers. We're driving our big rigs. Some of us are getting the kids together and we got you in. We got this uh, locked in in our earpiece and we hustling and busting around the house. Some of us are on our way home. We've already made our day. We worked that night and we, there's just so many different circumstances and situations that are connected to this time and this moment. But yet and still, God, worship is not about a place. We're acting that out right now. We're living that out. But worship, God, is about a posture that we have. So we carve this time out for you even now. So we don't lay in the bed and we don't, we're not, we're not just haphazardly just approaching this moment. But if we have the opportunity to posture our hearts and posture ourselves, God, we, you're, you're worth that. Uh, you're worth that to us. So God, we thank you. Um, because we understand that the posture has nothing to do with the bowing of my knees or whether I'm standing or walking or whatever. But long as my heart towards you is right and God we're thankful for that understanding we're thankful God that where we are we're, we're gathered together um, God in many different places but God we have gathered together around your throne and we thank you that no matter how many of us talk to you no matter how many requests we have today no matter how many of our hearts are aching and crying out for you you will not never get our signals crossed um, but God you know every single child you said in your word that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow we know your voice and god you know our voices and we thank you that where you know my heart and you know someone else's heart and you know my cry and you know someone else's cry thank you for being the all sufficient god thank you for being sovereign which just simply means that you're in control you're in control of our lives you're in control of this universe you're in control of all of the of the goings and the comings you you cause you cause kingdoms to rise and you cause kingdoms to fall. You're God all by yourself. Thank you for giving us, God, a, a clear picture of who you are. Thank you for giving us a clear picture of understanding your nature and understanding your character. Because the more we know of you, the more we learn of you, the more we study about you, uh, the more, God, we fall madly in love with you. You said in your word, for they that know their God uh, shall be strong and do exploits. I'm grateful that you're explaining to us, God, who you are. You're, you're explaining to us even as we talked this past Sunday, we, we talked about uh, your character or how how you are what you how you are gracious and you are plenteous and you are merciful, but yet you are holy. That's what the angel said in Isaiah six when Isaiah was able to kind of peep into heaven. He saw the angels flying around, crying one to another, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory, His splendor, His majesty. You are holy, other." Uh, you are holy and you are just and, and you, you, you balance yourself with yourself. And even someone testified after service on Sunday and said that that really resonated with them. That really, that really spoke to them. Uh, the fact that you're God, the fact that you don't have to check in with us when you get ready to do something. The fact that you don't, you don't owe us any explanation. Like you told Job, you said, Job, who are you? The way you asking me my going and my coming, where were you at when I flew? the stars off my fingers? Where were you at when I gave the seas and the oceans their decree? Where were you at when I spoke, let there be, and it was? That, that really resonated to that individual, and, and it should resonate to all of us because we've all had things that have happened to us in our lives that we didn't necessarily want to happen. We, we've all uh, had a season in our lives that where we, we, we kind of questioned what was going on. We, we really were kind of upset about what was going on. At least I know I, at least I know I was in 2009 when my mother transitioned. I had a problem with that. I couldn't. I was wrestling with that thing, and you and you led me to the prophet Habakkuk, uh, whose name means to embrace. He whose name means to wrestle with the promises of God, and 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 I had to I had to wrestle with that. I had to toil with that because I just couldn't understand what was going on. But God, understanding your character and understanding your nature, understanding that you love, understanding that you work all things together for our good. Understanding the fact that you, that you, with, with the temptation, with the situation, with the trial, with the trouble, you will give us a way of escape. God, that, that helps us to be able to, to deal with the here and the now. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, maybe someone that's on this call right now is, is wrestling with your will and wrestling with your word. Maybe they have some situations or a circumstance in their life right now that God, they just can't understand why things went the way that they 
went. Maybe it's their marriage uh, dissolved. Maybe they have a strained relationship with their children. Maybe their, finance, their finances are in disarray. Maybe they've had to say goodbye to a loved one that they felt like was way too soon. God, you know the circumstance. God, you know the dilemma. But God, help us all to come to the realization that you love us. Help us all to come to the realization that you're absolutely positively in, con in control and you're in charge. Help us all to come to the revelation to understand, God, that you are God all by yourself. And beside you, there is none other. We give your name the glory this morning. We give your name the honor and we give your name the praise, God, because you're revealing yourself to us. You've given us a general revelation of who you are. We've seen the sun, the stars, and the moon and the heavens, the psalm said, Psalm 19 and 1 said, the heavens declare your glory and even the earth, your, the, the, your, your splendor and your majesty. You reveal yourself to us in a very general way. But then, God, you've also revealed yourself to us in a very specific way through your word and a special way through your son. And God, thank Thank you for revealing yourself to us. We, 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 we would have known who you, who you are, God, if you had not revealed yourself. We would have given ourselves over to pagan worship, to idolatry. We would have been worshiping the creature and instead of the creator. We would be worshiping the stars and worshiping the, the sun and worshiping the, the, the beasts of the field and all of that. But God, you reveal yourself to us so we can know that you're God and you want us to be right with you. You want us to be right with you more than we desire to be right with you. When we were, when we were yet without strength when we was when we were sinners you still died for us that's how right you want us to be with you you want us to know your plan you want us to know your will you want us to know your agenda so you reveal yourself to us you're not just leading us aimlessly you just don't have us just just wandering around in circles and just have us just living this life god of no fulfillment and no and no no purpose but no you 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 reveal yourself to us again and again and again so we can be in proper alignment alignment and for that we tell you thank you thank you for your word and thank you for holy spirit that leads us and guides us in all truth thank you for your for your good hand that's upon our lives the way you order our steps in your word thank you uh for we've been young and now we're old but god we've never seen the righteous forsaken neither you'll see beg for bread we thank you god because you all all you do is right all you do god is do what you do we give your name the glory and the honor and the praise for that for for you being for you being uh, positively in control of everything we thank you because it's in you that we live in you that we move it's in you that we have our very being you are our source and our strength oh god you're god all by yourself and beside you there is none other we bless your name this morning we'll bless you in fact at all times and your praises shall continually be within our mouth we'll bless you at all times and we won't forget your benefits it's you that have saved us it's you that have healed us it is you that have delivered us whether we've been walking with you for a couple of months we've been walking with you uh, most of our lives it makes no difference god you've been good to us uh, there's one old song to say down through the years uh you have been good to us and god we thank you for that we thank you for down through the years and and when we look back over our lives we don't have to wonder how we how we made it over we don't have to wonder how we came out but god we thank you god that we know without a shadow of a doubt god that you have done what you've done and you are who you are and we give your name the glory for that this morning thank you for being the divine designer in our lives thank you for orchestrating our lives to have us right here at this moment right here at this time thank you god the way you had you had this time you had this day you had this wednesday you had this october you had this year you had this day in mind and you knew that we'll be right here talking to you and god you navigated our path to get right here god you orchestrated our path to get the right to this place, God. You don't do anything uh, haphazardly. You don't do anything, God, just on a whim. Nothing ever occurs to you. You never have an aha moment. But no, God, you are our divine designer. You are our grand master weaver. And God, you weave together all of our lives and weave together all of our ups and our downs, all of our ins and our outs, all of our shortcomings, all of our setbacks, all of our disappointments, all of our heartaches and all of our heartbreaks. God, you work them all together 
together just for this moment, just for this time. You worked it together for our good. Everything we've been through, oh God, has made us who we are today. And God, as much as we don't want to say this, but God, it is the truth that we wouldn't trade anything that we've gone through. We won't trade anything, God, that we've experienced because you've allowed all of it to make us who it is that we are. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor like Job. Job said, though you slay us, yet will we trust in you. Though we're going through, yet we'll look towards you. Yet we'll give you glory. Yet we'll give you honor. Yet we'll give you praise. Yet we'll bless you. Yet we'll give. Yet we'll serve. Yet we'll we'll worship you. We'll do whatever we need to do, God, because you've been that good to us. We thank you, God, as we're gathering together and as we as we worship you and as we've kind of kind of focus our attention on you. We're praying today, God, with, a, with, with, with specificity. We're praying today, God, with, with intentionality. We're praying, God, that, that uh, for divine protection and salvation and deliverance for all of our unsaved family members, friends, and loved ones. That's our prayer today. We're coming to you on behalf of them. We're coming to you on behalf of our unsaved friends and our unsaved family members right now in the name of Jesus. Many of us are connected to individuals who don't know you. Many of us work with individuals who don't know you. Many of us have in our families, God, individuals who don't know you. Many of us, God, have in our immediate family who don't know you. Maybe it's a parent or maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a grandchild. Many of us have many individuals, God, that are a part of our lives that don't know you. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for divine protection on their lives. God, they don't know any better. They're, they're, they're going through life ignorantly. And one time, God, we was ignorant. One time, we didn't know any better. One time, God, we, we thought we knew it all. One time, we thought we had it all together. One time, God, we thought that, that, that we was living our lives and doing our thing and all this type of thing, but, but we didn't understand that we were blind. And God, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray God for divine protection over their lives. Right now in the name of Jesus, they're blind. They don't know you. God, they need divine protection. We pray that they're not at the wrong place at the wrong time. We pray, God, that they won't be, they won't get caught up, God, in something that they can't get themselves out of. We pray, God, that where the enemy who the enemy desires to kill them in their sins. The enemy desires to destroy them in their sins. The enemy desires for them to, dirt, to die and to go to hell. Uh, for hell have enlarged her borders, God. The hell was not designed for, for people, but hell was created for the devil and his angels. And God, he tries to blind us. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says he blinds the mind of those who don't believe. And he wants our loved ones blind. He wants our co-workers blind. He wants our spouses blind. He wants our children children blind so they can bust hell wide open. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we're pray praying not only for divine protection, but God, we're praying right now, God, the way, the, the way you will be able to expose and you'll be able to remove the, the blindness off of their eyes and let the scales drop off of their eyes right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, every unclean spirit, foul spirit, any spirit that's not like Christ, any spirit that's not of God, that is blinding our loved ones and blinding our our children, our grandchildren. Oh, we renounce it right now with the name of Jesus. We denounce it in the name of Jesus. We render it powerless right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, people of God. If you got a family member who's not saved, if you if you're in a spot the way you can be able to just kind of say their name or whisper their name or think about that individual, see their face. I see faces even now. Faces are flashing before me, and I see them even now. And these individuals that I see, these individuals that, 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 that Lord is in my spirit even now, I pray for them right now that you will save them. I pray right now, God, that you'll remove the blindness that Satan have set up. I pray right now, God, that you'll remove it, God, and we tear down those strongholds. We cast down those strongholds. And God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we do war. We wage war on, 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 on the kingdom of darkness, God, that where, that where our loved ones, that our coworkers, God, that our family, that our friends will come to know you in the name of Jesus. They don't have to die in their sins. They don't have to live defeatedly. No, no, no. The thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. We see you. We're not ignorant of his devices, but no. We, he comes to steal, kill and destroy, but God you come to give us a life and give it to us more abundantly. So we pray for divine protection and we pray God that you will open up their eyes and we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will save them. You're not. We just don't want them to have an experience 
We just don't want them just to have some goosebumps. We just don't want them to have a close encounter. We don't want them just to say, oh man, I feel better, or oh, I'm trying, or I'm doing this, and not what I was, but all this kind of stuff. But no, God, we want them to have a head-on collision with you. We call out the names of individuals in our families, our grandchildren, our children, oh, our neighbors, God, our friends, our co-workers, God, we ask you to save them right now. We can't save them. God, we ask you to save them and help us, God, to realize that, that we can't fuss them into the kingdom. We can't complain them into the kingdom. We can't keep on reminding them of their mess and remind them of their sin. We're turning them off. We're shutting them out, God. We, no, 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 no. God, help us, God. Like Paul said, my heart's desire and prayer is, Romans 10, or in verse 1, said that Israel might be saved. And God, that's our heart's desire. That's our prayer. And God, we talk to you. We're not going to be fussing at them. We're not going to be beating them across the head with the Bible and telling them how much wrong they're doing and they need to come to church and they need to do this and they need to do that. We're not going to do that. But no, God, we do what Paul said to the church at Ephesus in Acts chapter 20, verse 32. He said, I commend you over to God and to the word of his power. Oh, and that's what we do, God. We commend them over to you. And God, we pray that you will save them. We pray, we pray God, that you'll send somebody their way. Put somebody in their path. We don't got to get the credit. We don't got to get the glory, but send somebody some their way. God, to let them say something that'll prick their heart. Let them say something, God, that'll make sense to them. Let them say something, God, that where it would cause them, God, to be able to say, what must I do to be saved? One man plant, another water, but God, we pray that you will give the increase. We've already did the planning. We've already did the instructing. We've already, God, we've already let our light so shine. We've already planted. We've already said what we need to say, but God, let somebody come back and plant another seed, or let somebody else come and water that seed that was planted, and then we pray, God, that you will bring forth the harvest, God. That is salvation. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, for this year is out. We pray, God, that you, that, that someone major that we've been praying for will come into the kingdom of God. Come on, will you stand in faith with me? Truth and love, will you stand in faith with me? That somebody that you've been praying for, somebody that you've been, that you've been believing God for, for years to be saved, the years to be delivered, for years to come off them streets, for years to go to come off them drugs, for years to put that bottle down, for years to stop doing what they're doing. Okay, will you believe God with me that, that God can save them by the end of the year? Come on, I prayed for my daddy for years and God saved him. And I know, and yes, he, he wasn't your model Christian. Oh, but I know he's in heaven right now. And we, and, 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 and come on, I connect my faith with your faith right now. The way I've seen God do it when, when I just wasn't the only one praying for him. He had his sister was praying for him and his other children were praying for him. And, and so many people were praying for him to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God did that thing. And God don't love the Nesbitts no more than he loves loved you. Oh, no, no, no. He he, he loves you. He has no re respect to a person. And we, we still got some folk that we believe in God and our family to be saved. And well, I'll connect my faith because I've seen them do it. As many of you have seen them do it as well. But let's pray together that there's somebody that you believe in God for, that God is going to change and God is going to deliver and God is going to save them by the time this year is out. And we're praying right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you'll do it. We're praying right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you'll give them a breakthrough and you'll give them deliverance. We're praying right now in the name of Jesus, God, that where they'll come to know you right now in the name of Jesus. We give your name the glory for you love us that much. We're writing their name down because we're standing on that word. God, we're believing. We're seeing their faces right now. And God, we believe that you're going to do it right now in the name of Jesus. And we don't got to get the credit. We don't got to get the glory. Nobody got to even know that we've been praying for them. But God, all that matters is God that you know. We won't get, we won't know how powerful our prayers have been until we get to heaven. And God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. So God, you, you're you able to move. We invite you right now to move. We invite you to get involved in their life. They're not, they're not wise enough to ask you themselves, so we ask you to get involved in their life. We give you license. We give you authority to get involved in their life in the name of Jesus. We give your name the glory for it. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. We thank you, God, for persons right now that may be going through in their body. We pray for 100% healing. We pray from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, even those individuals, God, who, who are struggling in their body and struggling in their mind and struggling right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for 100% deliverance. I pray, God, that you will, that you will do what only you can do, that you will move on their behalf. God, that you will heal them. I, I spoke with someone yesterday, God, that, that's in the hospital. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will, that you will heal that individual from the crown of 
their head to the sole of their feet. If I know them like I know them, I know they're on this prayer call because they, they, they just that kind of believer. They just trust you that kind of way. And right there in that hospital room, even as they listen to this prayer, even as they tap in right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to heal their body right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you give them faith and give them confidence and give them a divine assurance. Oh God, that you're able to heal, deliver and set free. We know what the doctors have said. We know what has happened in their body. Oh, but God, we bring these bodies back to the manufacturer. You made these bodies and God, you're able to do what you want to do. You're able to make all things new. You're able to touch us. You're able to heal us. You're able to deliver us. And we ask you to do it right now in the name of Jesus. Do it for that individual and do it for us all right now. God, those of us that are struggling with cancers and struggling with COVID and struggling with kidney failure and arthritis and arth arthritic pain and God, gout and God, all different types of things, our back aches and migraines and, and all these things that attack our bodies. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for divine healing from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We thank you for healing. We thank you, God. Maybe I didn't call out their sickness. Maybe I didn't call out their ailment. Maybe I didn't call out. Maybe it's heart disease. Maybe it's maybe it's uh, COPD. Maybe it's maybe it's all type of things. I can't name everything, but God, you know what it is. And even individuals that's in that's a part of this prayer, they're calling out their ailment. They're calling out what they're going through. They're whispering it right now. They're saying it right now. And God, we we're naming what it is that we're going through. We're naming what it is, God, that we're facing. God, because you said in your word, at the name of Jesus, every name, every knee must bow. At your name, at your authority, every knee must bow. And God, we call their name. God, we call it out. God, the way we might be able to name it, the way you can be able to cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. We give you glory for it. We give you honor for our healing. And everybody not going through God in the physical sense. There's some folk that's struggling in their mind. They're struggling, God, but the, 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 the battlefield of the mind, they waged, there's war been waged, God, between their ears. And I pray for those individuals that are struggling, God, with depression and battling with schizophrenia and battling, God, with T, with P, with TPSD and, and battling, God, with, 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 uh, with all of these different, uh, all these different attacks on our mind right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, for divine healing in our mind. We pray, God, that you'll touch us and, God, that you'll deliver us. And, God, even if I didn't say the name right or, or any other type of name, I pray anything that's attacking our mind that we've been diagnosed with schizophrenia, whatever the case may be. I pray God for healing in our minds right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that where you've given us soundness of mind, solidarity of mind. God, we thank you, God, that where you're able to touch our minds and God, you're able to do it. You're able to do it with medication and uh, with, with, with help, God, from a professional. Oh, but God, at the same time, you're able to do it without any of that. You don't need no medication. We don't need no no, we don't need to lay on no couch. We don't need to do any of that. If you so desire to heal us and so desire, God, to gird up the loins of our mind and God, to be able to give us a refreshing and a renewal in our mind, you're able to do so. Whatever it is that you so desire to do, we pray, God, for you to do that right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for divine healing. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for all of our marriages, God. I pray that all our marriages be kingdom marriages. Many of us have been through some things in our marriages, God. And if, you, if you've been married in the length of time, you've been through some things. There's been some hurt. There's been some pain. There's been some some words that's been said. There's been some things that's been done. But I pray right now with the name of Jesus, God, that we'll tap into divine forgiveness. That's the only way we can forgive people, especially our spouse. We know them and we know what they did and how they did it and why they did it and what they said and how they said it. God, the only way we can forgive them the way that you desire for us to forgive them, God, we got to be in you. We got to stand in you. That's why he said, finally, my brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We can't forgive in our own strength. We can't let things go in our own strength. We can't We can't go on with life in our own strength. But right now in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to stand in you and we'll be able to forgive our spouses. God, we'll be able to get, we'll be able to continue. We'll be able to, to continue to move on, God, in our marriages right now in the name of Jesus. We want, if we're, we're going to stay there, God, we can't keep on bringing up the past 
past and bringing up what they did and bringing up what they said. And God, even if we don't bring it up, many of us know how not to say a mumbling word, but God, we're harboring that stuff in our heart. We're holding on to it in our heart. And God, we're, we're, we're hot as fire on the inside. We may be cool and calm and collected on the outside, but on the inside, God, we're hot as fire because we're angry and we're upset, God. We, we got this old passive, oh, this old passive aggressiveness that God on the outside, we're, we're sitting on the outside, God, we're, we're compliant, but on the inside, we're standing up. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that, that our outward confession will match, God, our heart's condition. And right now, we, we ask you to give us the strength that we need, God, to let that mess go and God, to walk away from the pain and, the, and to forget about what has happened as relates to moving on. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that over every marriage. I pray, God, that no man, that no, no, let no man or let in, no individual, God, what you have joined together, let no man, let no individual, God, bring it to separation. But God, I pray, God, that you will heal. And I pray, God, that you'll give us all the heart of forgiveness. And I pray, God, that you'll help us all to fall madly in love again with our spouses right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you'll do that for us, God, that we'll, we'll be a, that we'll let, we'll be a kingdom example on God, what you had in mind when you had the local church in mind. That's what you gave us a picture of marriage. It's a, it's a mystery. It's a picture of what the body of Christ is. And we thank you for it. I thank you for our single saints, God, that, that are, that are, that are, that are right snap mac dab in the middle of your will and your, and what you have for them. And I pray God that you'll continue to give them strength and continue to give them confidence and continue to allow them to tap into patience, God, that only comes from you. We can only wait on you, God, the same way that the, that the married folk can stand strong. It's the same way that the single folk are standing strong. It's in you. It's not by our own power. It's not by our own might. We got our, we got craves. We got wants. We got desires. We got, we got goals and dreams and aspirations and all these things. But God, we lay all that down, God, at, at the sovereignty of your will. We lay all that down at the altar and God, we say, not my will, not my time frame, not what I want, not who I want, not what I want, but God, but what it is what you want. And God, I pray, God, that you'll continue to give every single strength and every single uh, a settledness in their heart and in their mind, God, that, we, that they'll know uh, continually that you're absolutely positively in control. We pray for our babies and we cover our children, God. We cover them every day. And God, we don't take this for granted because there's so much going on. There's so much, so many incidents and so many accidents, so much abduction, so much rape and so much murder, so much pedophilia. There's so much going on, God. We cover our babies right now in the name of Jesus. We cover them in prayer, God, knowing, God, that, knowing, God, that you can protect them when we can't, knowing that you're going to be with them than when we're not, knowing, God, that you'll, you'll, you'll have goodness and mercy with them, God, all the days of their life. And we speak that over our children, our grandchildren right now in the name of Jesus, that they experience no hurt, no harm, no danger right now in the name of Jesus. Keep them from stray bullets and keep them from cars jumping the curb when they're on the sidewalk and keep them from drive-bys and keep them, God, from, from, from attacks and keep them from all different types of manner of evil. There's so much evil in this world. There's so much corruption in this world. Even as we're praying right now, something is going down somewhere right now. But God, we pray for divine protection over our families and for divine protection over our homes and divine protection, God, over our children and our grandchildren, our nieces and our nephews right now in the name of Jesus. Protect them, God, as only you can. Be with them, God, as only you can. Be Jehovah Shammah. Be the Lord that is there. Be there with them on the bus. Be there with them in the classrooms. Be there with them on in the hallways. Be there with them in the neighborhoods. Be there with them in the back seat of the cars. Be there with them, God, on the stairwells. Be there with them in the field house. Be there with them in the waiting room. Be there with them, God, in the classroom. Be there with them no matter where they are. God, we pray that you'll be with them right now in the name of Jesus. And God, let something, God, let something well up in their heart and in their spirit when they when they're been when they're at a crossroads and where they'll know better. God, let what we put in them, God, come out of them in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. We thank you, God, for every prayer request that may be on the heart, on the mind of individuals on this prayer. I don't know everybody's heart. I don't know everybody's situation, but right now in the name of Jesus, God, I know there's a lot of different people, and I know there's a lot of different individuals, God. I know it's at least 50 some of our people that's on this line right now that's averaging about where we are every single Wednesday, at least 50.
50 or so people. That's 50 or so different problems. That's a lot of different situations. Some people need you in a financial breakthrough. Some people need you in their relationships. Some people need you in their marriage. Some people need a healing. Some people need all different types of things. And God makes no difference what it is that we need. I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus, that your grace, that your power, that your anointing will meet them, God, at the very point of their need. Right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that you will strengthen each and every last one of us according to your plan and your purposes right now in the name of Jesus. Roman 8, 26 says, I don't know how to pray as we all, but Holy Spirit makes intercession for us and with groanings that cannot be uttered. And I pray, God, that you will make intercession for every need and every concern right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for our local church. We thank you for Truth and Love Ministries. Thank you for what it is that you're doing. Thank you that the good hand of the Lord is upon our ministry. Thank you for the souls that, that will continue to be saved as a result of Truth and Love Ministry. Thank you for the lives that will continue to be changed as a result of Truth and Love Ministry. Thank you, God, for where you're sending them from all over the east and the west and north and the south. Thank you, God, the way you said in your word in John 12, 32, if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men to yourself. And I pray, God, that, that we will lift you up as a ministry. And I pray, God, that you'll, that we'll, that we'll exemplify that drawing power. I pray that we're magnetic, we're, we're magnetic, God, in the name of Jesus, not for our name, not for our pats on the back, but God, for the furtherance of the gospel. God, we're praying for souls to come in because we know we're going to teach them right. We're praying that souls going to come in, God. We know they're going to be infused and be empowered by the worship. We're praying the souls that souls to come in, God, because we're going to we're gonna handle them properly, God. We're going to do life with them. So, God, we got the right to pray for souls to come in because we're not going to mishandle your people. And, God, we know, God, we're going to do what it is that we need to do. So, we pray for the souls and we pray for the backsliders. We pray for the people driving by. We pray for the people in our community. We pray, God, that we're individual continue to come and continue to flock and continue to flood your house, God, in the name of Jesus. We give your name the glory, God, the way you're turning the north side around, God, for your glory and for your honor and for your praise. Thank you, God, for all that you commissioned and commanded Truth and Love Ministry to do, for every dream, for every vision, for everything you've spoken to us. God, we've written it down. We made it plain. And now, God, it's coming to pass. Thank you that we got resource enough. Thank you that we got facility enough. Thank you that we got volunteer and servants enough. Thank you for that we got everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. And last but certainly not least, I pray for my family. I pray for my wife. I pray for Lady C that you'll touch her and strengthen her and heal her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Continue to be with her. Continue to move on her and in her. In the name of Jesus, continue to be with my children. Asharia, Kendall, Carson, C4. Protect my babies. Be with my babies. The enemy, the enemy hates me and he hates what we're doing. So he wants to distract me. He wants me all um, despondent, wants me discouraged and one of the main ways he does that, he attacks my home, he attacks my wife, he attacks my marriage he attacks my children, but right now in the name of Jesus, God I pray you'll insulate my family and that the enemy will not see his desires upon their lives, right now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you God, because this is the confidence that we have in you. If we ask anything according to your will, God, you said we can have it. And we're so thankful, to God, that we prayed your word today. We prayed your word this morning. So we know there's your will and we know it's going to come to pass. So we thank you in advance for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, you guys know I love y'all. Thank you for your faithfulness and your commitment to this time and this moment. Uh, continue to invite people. Now, I know we're averaging. You heard me say it in a prayer about 50 or so people every week after every call. But I, I ask you to continue to invite. Come on, let's let's blow this conference call line up. Uh, continue to invite people. Send them the flyer when you see us posted on group mate. Send them the link whenever it is the prayer come out. Come on, let this be an evangelistic tool. We got to be creative, you all. The Bible says he that win them souls is wise. And that's why your church goes through whatever effort. We're, we're gonna, we got apps and we got websites and we got all different types of things uh, to be able to push the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take advantage of all these things that we have at your, that you got at your fingertips. Just don't keep it for yourself. And even worse than that, use them yourself. Tap into what's going on in your ministry and, and send it out to people. Be evangelistic. They send you all that other mess and see all these memes and all these jokes and all this stuff. Why don't you send them the word? Why don't you send them a prayer? And then you send them the prayer and then maybe just maybe they'll jump on the next time. So this is not just for us in-house. This is for everybody. All right, man. I love y'all. You know, 
know I'm gonna ask you to post on group me. That incur we got people in house that that don't take advantage of the prayer. So let alone you know we got folk outside the house. So let's keep posting on group me. That encourages others to get on get on board to get back in and say hey, you know what everybody not crazy. All these people talking about how powerful prayer is. Let me see what this is all about. Let me get on and then next thing you know they're hooked and they can't stop. They can't stop from getting on. And so post on group me and of course you know I'm gonna ask you to posture yourself properly at noon and also 7 p.m. You all have been responding and I know we're still in the midst of what we're dealing with you all, but the, I believe it's time for the people of God to be the people of God and to stand up and be the people of God. And again, I'm not speaking if you're not comfortable coming to the worship, but I need you to be comfortable enough to tune in and virtually, whether noon or 7 p.m. But if you feel comfortable coming to worship, if you feel comfortable coming out and you have been coming, I encourage you to make Thursday night. Give, give noonday and give Thursday night. Let that be a part of what you offer to the Lord, all right? So you won't just be getting half of what it is that your pastor is giving. You'll be able to get the whole thing because you need the whole thing, all right? Man, I love y'all. I pray you have a phenomenal day on purpose. I pray that God put somebody in your path that you can share your faith. I pray that God put somebody in your path that you can pray with them. They're spilling their guts and spilling their beans about what they're going through. Ask them, hey, you mind if I pray with you? I, I pray that God put somebody in your path that you can minister to them and build them up and be able to be used of the Lord, all right? I love y'all. I thank God for you. Peace out. Here come the church. Bye-bye.